He's the chairman of Sprott U.S. Holdings. Rick Rule joins us now at the Minds and Money Conference. Rick, we're wrapping up the show with you here today. Thanks so much for joining us back on Kitco News. Saving the best for last. Saving Thank you. Best for, I didn't want to say it. You said. So <laughs> what a year for commodities. Uh, you know, we've seen some assets really take off, like gold, after many had discounted it at the end of last year, now up close to 30%. Other commodities not faring as well. So we want to talk a little bit about this with you today. I caught the, a bit of your presentation today, and I love how you brought up a quote from Warren Buffett, where you said, you know, it's, it's best to be, to be brave when others are afraid. So is this the mantra we should be using Absolutely. in mining and in gold? Absolutely. You and Kitco have been in the business long enough to understand that these are capital-intensive cyclical businesses. Bear markets are the authors of bull markets, and bull markets are the authors of bear markets. I summarized Buffett by saying, either you are a contrarian yep. or you will become a victim. Absolutely. Be yeah. brave when others are afraid. Be afraid when others are brave. So what, how do you see gold playing out in 2017? More of the same of 2016? or I'm uh, very comfortable with the bullion. I think the bullion goes higher. I think the catalyst for the bullion going higher is simple. It's zero interest rates and negative interest rates. You and I have talked for years. Years, about, waiting for that rate hike. Well, well we got one we, last year. We've but been talking about the narrative yeah, behind gold, right. the debt, demographics, yes. all that. But the catalyst was negative and zero interest rates. My suspicion is that the gold stocks, at least the juniors, have run a little too far too fast. I think they need a rest. You know. Uh, a consolidation phase, even a decline, is natural and normal in a bull market. And it wouldn't surprise me to see an index which is up by 150% take a breather. But it's, it's not a head fake. Okay. Uh, it's just that it's gone too far too fast. So would you take a pause on the juniors now and be more invested in the mid-tier, uh, the, the majors? We invest in the cycle all the time. We're opportunity driven. The problem for us, meaning Sprott, is that other people in this market are more generous than we are. The terms that we got last year and the year before are distant memories. We're risk-adjusted net present value investors and we're competing with general market securities people and investment banks that are much less price sensitive than we are. So at the conference, the U.S. election, obviously the debate was this week, has taken center stage. How do you see it and how can that play out for gold? I know we love having this debate. Who would be best for the metal? Who would be best for the market? How does Rick Rule see it? Buffett again famously says the country is great enough that it can survive either of them. Uh, I, I think those are two amazingly poor candidates. Uh, that's all I'll say. It's disgusting to me that a country with 30 million, 300 million people can only turn out those two. If uh, indecision is good for gold, then both of them will be spectacular because they're two, two appallingly bad candidates. Um, I think, frankly, that interest rates will be more important to the gold market than either Clinton or Trump. I suspect in the very near term, should Clinton win, the country club Republicans will throw their hands up in terror and perhaps buy gold. Should Trump win, the, Demo the die-hard Democrats, assuming they have any money, uh, might do the same. In truth, I, I, just, I, I regard the election as a, just a disgusting sideshow. Do you have any feeling of what the central bank will do? Central bank is trapped. Um, it, it seems to me that they've spawned a put. The underlying economy on a global basis is very weak. I see no evidence of demand for anything worldwide, caveat being that I'm a credit analyst, not an economist. Mm. At the same time that capital markets and governments themselves are addicted to low interest rates. You introduced famed mining legend Robert Friedland yesterday who gave a bit of a controversial talk. Uh, he said, well, you know, he would prefer platinum over gold because central banks can't, quote, puke up platinum they can do so with gold. Robert is probably a better commodities analyst than I am. I'm a credit analyst. Robert has been absolutely serially successful. I can say this in defense of his thesis, although I own more gold than I do platinum and palladium. The lovely thing about platinum and palladium is that on a global basis, the industry average production cost is above the selling cost, meaning that the industry itself is in liquidation. Either the price of platinum and palladium goes up, 
or smog increases because the trade-off is platinum and palladium for catalytic converters or smog. I don't see your generation with picket signs saying more smog, more smog, more smog, which tells me that the platinum and palladium price has to go up. I also believe the gold price will go up, so I'm more agnostic than Robert. What about his thoughts on rare earths, which he said are, are not, neither rare nor earths? He is exactly correct. He is 100% correct. He and I were laughing the night before last that the most prevalent rare earths in the mining business are fraudium, storium, and scamium. Uh, in other words, that the, the segment is an enormous dead end for investor capital. Do you also agree that lithium inv investing will end in tears? I do. I do. Uh, I, I can see lithium prices going higher for a little while, but the big four lithium producers worldwide have enormous amounts of lithium. When they throw capital at the lithium, uh, there is no supply shortage of lithium. You know, in the geothermal business, as an example, lithium is a cost. It makes scale on downhole equipment. The idea that there's a shortage of lithium is ridiculous. As Robert pointed out himself, the lithium, lithium battery is 3% lithium. The lithium battery is a nickel battery. That's really what it is. Now, you can't go to an investment conference and have a booth with an electric car and a pretty girl and talk about nickel because you have to talk about geology and stuff like that. Lithium is wonderful for promoting stocks. From an economic point of view, it's a, it's a, a comic afterthought. So you're sticking to the precious metals, Rick? Well, no. I like the copper business. Right. I like the coal business. I like the uranium business, I like the nickel business, I like the zinc business, I like any real market. But these little dinky markets, I mean they're popular in Canada because nobody's ever lost money on them before. You can paint a dream around some substance that nobody else can spell and because there's no negative experience you can raise some money and get a fee. It's not the same as an investment. Rick Rule, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure. Thank and you for th your time. And thank you for watching our coverage here from the Minds and Money Conference in Toronto. It's a wrap. We'll see you next year.